At the beginning of spring 1941, Germany had a firm grip over most of Europe. The Germans were finalizing their plans for the coming invasion of the Soviet Union. But before the invasion could start, Hitler wanted to invade Greece to secure the Balkan region completely and to ensure that the British wouldn't bomb the Romanian oil fields, on which the Germans depended on so greatly. But just before the attack on Greece was to start, a coup in Yugoslavia changed the whole situation in the Balkans. It was this coup that had Hitler order an invasion of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia had managed to stay neutral since the beginning of the war. However, after the Italian invasion of Greece began on the 28th of October 1940, Yugoslav neutrality would not be lasting for much longer. With the Italian invasion failing, Hitler realized he needed to help his Italian ally. He therefore ordered a German invasion of Greece from Bulgaria codenamed Operation Marita. But for German forces to invade Greece at all, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Yugoslavia would have to allow German forces passage through their countries. Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria all signed the Tripartite Pact by March 1941 thus allowing German forces to be stationed in those countries. All that was left was for Yugoslavia to sign the pact as well. Yugoslavia was by this point almost completely surrounded by the Axis powers. Hitler skillfully used diplomatic pressure on the regent of Yugoslavia, Prince Paul, to get Yugoslavia to sign the pact. The terms of the pact presented to Prince Paul were that the territorial integrity of Yugoslavia was to be respected no military assistance from Yugoslavia was required, and lastly, Yugoslavia's claims for access to the Aegean Sea would be considered at war's end. After consulting with his government, Prince Paul authorized the signing of the Tripartite Pact. On the 25th of March 1941, the pact was signed in Vienna. With most of the Balkan region now secured, the Germans could begin their invasion of Greece. However, the signing of the pact was unpopular for many in Yugoslavia, and just two days later, there was a coup in Yugoslavia. The coup was executed on the 27th of March. The coup plotters were opposed to signing any treaty with Germany, and they decided to act. They overthrew the regent government swiftly, and did so without bloodshed. In place of Prince Paul's government, the 17-year-old King Peter II was declared to be of age and would now rule Yugoslavia alongside the coup plotters. The new government did not officially denounce or ratify the pact with Germany, and it tried its best to avoid a war with Germany. But they did not realize how badly received the news of the coup was in Germany. Hitler was absolutely furious when he heard of the coup. On the same day of the coup, Hitler told his high command that Yugoslavia should be regarded as an enemy. He ordered them to destroy the country militarily and as a national unit. Yugoslavia was to be pulverized with merciless brutality. Hitler issued his Führer Directive 25 that day, which called for the invasions of Yugoslavia and Greece. Within hours of Hitler issuing his Führer Directive, the German High Command put together a draft plan for the invasion of Yugoslavia codenamed Operation 25. The Luftwaffe was to bomb Belgrade to paralyze the ability of the Yugoslav Army Command to control its units. The Luftwaffe would also concentrate on destroying the Yugoslav Air Force and supporting the Axis ground forces. The ground forces would invade Yugoslavia from three directions, with all attacks converging on Belgrade. The German 2nd Army was to advance from Austria along the Drava and Sava rivers. The 1st Panzer Group, part of the 12th Army, would advance from Bulgaria towards Nish. Finally, the 41st Panzer Corps would attack from Romania directly towards Belgrade. The German plan was to destroy the Yugoslav army at Belgrade before it could retreat into the mountains. Forces from the other Axis powers were also to take part in the invasion. The Italian 2nd and 9th armies were given the task of advancing along the Adriatic coast. The Hungarian 3rd Army would also take part in the invasion, but it would only partake in local fighting along the Hungarian border. The Yugoslav plan for the defense of the country was known as War Plan R-41. 
R-41 was created in March 1941 when German troops moved into Bulgaria. The plan assumed that the Germans and Italians would invade the country from all sides. The plan called for an all-round defense of the country to stop the invasion at the borders, a joint invasion of Albania with the Greeks, and to keep a route open to the port of Salonika in Greece. The Germans planned to invade Yugoslavia with the Second Army, the 1st Panzer Group, and the 41st Panzer Corps. The Italians had at their disposal their 2nd and 9th Armies. The Hungarians would use 9 brigades of their 3rd Army for the invasion. The Luftwaffe committed 1,158 aircraft of all types for the invasion. The Italian and Hungarian air forces were also active in the invasion. Altogether, the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia with around 640,000 soldiers. The overall operational commander of the invasion was General Maximilian von Weichs. The Yugoslavs divided up their units into three army groups. The three army groups were the first, second, and third, with the following armies attached to them. There was also the fifth and sixth armies that were not part of any army group. The Yugoslav Air Force had a frontline strength of 460 aircraft, of which a little over 100 were modern types. Ironically, the Yugoslavs used both Allied and Axis aircraft, such as the German BF-109 and the British Hurricane. The armed forces of Yugoslavia was led by General Dusan Simovitz. The Yugoslav army had a paper strength of 1.2 million men, however, the army only managed to mobilize around 700,000 men before the invasion. Equipment for the army was also either not available or obsolete. Also, the non-Serbian units of the army did not want to fight to defend a country they did not feel a part of. These factors would spell disaster for the defense of Yugoslavia. The start of the invasion of Yugoslavia was set for the 6th of April 1941. The invasion started at 6.45 with a massive air raid on Belgrade. Between 4,000 and 17,000 civilians were killed in the attack, and it crippled the Yugoslav army headquarters' ability to command and control its army. At the same time, the Luftwaffe attacked known Yugoslav air bases across the country. By the 7th of April, 60% of the Yugoslav air force was out of action. The first German units to cross into Yugoslavia was the 40th Panzer Corps of the 12th Army on the way to invade Greece via Yugoslavia on April 6th. It faced heavy resistance from the Yugoslav 3rd Territorial Army, but the next day they broke through and took Skopje. The Yugoslavs' route of retreat and supply had already been cut. That same day in the north of the country, units of the German 2nd Army seized bridges across the Drava and Sava rivers and began crossing into Yugoslavia. On April 8th, the 1st Panzer Group launched its attack on Yugoslavia from Bulgaria and headed towards Nish. The Yugoslav 5th Army offered stiff resistance but could not hold back the Germans forever who entered Nish on the 9th. The way to Belgrade was open for the 1st Panzer Group. On the 10th, the 41st Panzer Corps in Romania attacked towards Belgrade and met resistance from the Yugoslav 6th Army. On the same day, the German 2nd Army made its main move towards Belgrade. The 46th Panzer Corps attacked from Barch towards Belgrade. It smashed through the Yugoslav 4th and 2nd Armies and reached Novi Sad by the 11th. The 51st Corps, meanwhile, moved to capture Zagreb. Several units of the Yugoslav 7th Army surrendered to them and the 51st Corps captured Zagreb by the 11th. To the right of the 51st Corps, the 49th Mountain Corps moved to capture important mountain passes in Slovenia. By this point, the situation was dire for Yugoslavia, and it was only getting worse as on April 10th, Croatia declared its independence. But fighting in Yugoslavia still continued unabated. The Yugoslav 3rd Army even undertook offensive actions into Albania as part of the now obsolete war plan R-41. Units of the 3rd Army began the offensive on April 7th and by the 10th, 
Some units had advanced 50 kilometers into Albania, but with the situation in Yugoslavia rapidly deteriorating, by the 10th, the Yugoslav divisions were forced to pull back into Yugoslavia. A few days later, on April 12th, the Yugoslav Air Force was dealt a killing blow when a German air raid on Bielinja destroyed most of what remained of the Air Force. Worse still for Yugoslavia, at the same time, both the Italians and Hungarians launched their invasions of Yugoslavia. The Italians were not ready to invade at the same time as the Germans, but they were ready by April 11th. The Italian 2nd Army quickly took Ljubljana and took 30,000 prisoners near Delnitsia. The Hungarians, meanwhile, undertook a small-scale offensive that faced little resistance as they advanced in the direction of Novi Sad. By the time of the Italian and Hungarian attacks, the Germans had already closed on Belgrade itself. The Germans advanced on Belgrade and on April 13th, they occupied Belgrade without resistance. By this time, the Germans had linked up with all their forces committed to Yugoslavia. The next major objective of the Germans now became Sarajevo, where the Yugoslav High Command had relocated to. The German 2nd Army ordered all its corps to head towards Sarajevo. The 1st Panzer Group also headed towards Sarajevo via Uzise. The Germans began their advance and on April 14th, the 1st Panzer Group captured some Yugoslav officers who were instructed to begin surrender negotiations with the Germans. On the same day, King Peter and his government flew out of the country and went into exile. On the 15th, the German 14th Panzer Division entered Sarajevo and took the Yugoslav High Command prisoner in the city. The Yugoslav High Command then entered into negotiations with the Germans and ordered all remaining Yugoslav units to surrender. Just a few days later, on April 17, 1941, Yugoslavia surrendered unconditionally to the Axis powers. The invasion of Yugoslavia was complete. The campaign in Yugoslavia officially ended on the 18th of April when the terms of the unconditional surrender went into force. The whole campaign lasted a total of 12 days. After the end of the campaign, Yugoslavia was partitioned between the Axis powers. Germany annexed northern Slovenia and occupied Serbia. Italy annexed the rest of Slovenia and parts of Dalmatia and received Montenegro. Hungary annexed Vojvodina and Bulgaria would be given Macedonia. The rest was part of the newly independent state of Croatia. The fall of Yugoslavia and soon after the fall of Greece would secure the Balkan region and the precious Romanian oil fields for Germany. The swiftness of the German attack led to few German casualties during the campaign. German losses were 151 dead and 407 wounded and missing. Total Italian and Hungarian casualties were 3,300 and 350 respectively. Yugoslav casualties were a few thousand killed and wounded, and over 300,000 Yugoslav soldiers were taken prisoner. But even though Yugoslavia was beaten, resistance to the Germans continued. The Yugoslav resistance movement would become one of the three largest resistance movements in Europe. The Germans would have a very hard time during their occupation of Yugoslavia. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw here, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Farewell.